Happy New Year! It's a new year and uh, we're getting started now with a new video. A lot of you have written to me and told me that you're learning how to play and for the first time you're finally getting it. But a lot of you have been asking me to give you hints on how to make you sound not like a beginner anymore. So quite a while ago at one of the extravaganzas where, when I was working, I did a workshop called Getting an Attitude Without Much Aptitude. So I'm going to give you some hints today about how to just embellish your music, make it sound nicer and more professional. Uh, and even though you're a beginner, you can sound better just by changing your attitude and exuding some confidence. So I'm going to uh, put this uh, list up as a PDF and you can get it on our website at sacramentomusicgroup.com and that will accompany this video. Uh, also, I have lots of books available, so we'll talk about those later as we go with the video. So just relax and watch this, and then you can download this PDF, and everything that I'm telling you is on this piece of paper. And you could just put it on your keyboard and leave it there and, and just use it whenever you feel like it. Hi, okay, well now we're ready to get started. This is the PDF that you can download off of sacramentomusicgroup.com. It's free and um, it'll give you all the, the things that we talk about in this little session. I'm going to go pretty quickly here because I don't want this video to be super long. But let's start with number one. If you have a, a piece of music and someone uh, emailed me this week and asked me, how do you take a piece of fake book music um, this is one of my favorite books. It's called Getting Started, A Beginner's Learning Guide. And it's put out by Hal Leonard. And it, it just has the big note, easy play music in it. And if you don't have this, I recommend that you get one of these books, especially if you're a beginner. And even though I play, I, I still enjoy playing out of these books. So this one only has a, two chords in it, but it's kind of boring. It's called Marianne, and it's in every beginner book there is. So if I just play it like it's just written, it sounds like this. Now that's kind of cool, and, and if you're a beginner, actually, that's kind of thrilling. But so number one that uh, out of the 20 hints to make you sound cool is add a grace note. A grace note is a half step below the note that you see written there. So if this is my first note, I'm going to grace note it with this, just this black note here. And it's called a ta-da. And you don't want to do it all the time, so just keep it tasteful. And you'll, it will just change just a simple little melody and add just a little bit of that wow factor that you're looking for. Number two is, is called a trill. Add a trill, or in the class we used to laugh and call it, give yourself a trill. A trill is just a whole step higher. It's a ta-da-da-da-da. So you could go. That's a trill. Okay, then you can add a, you could kind of do an over and an under. Combine a trill and a grace note. You could go up and down, just move. And if you have, especially if you have a note, like in Marianne, you have a half note tied to a whole note, which you're gonna hold for a really long time, then just take a, take a walk. And just see what happens. It, how do you, and how do you know if it's right? If it sounds right. And you probably never do it the same way twice. Play more notes than you see. This is my favorite one. If you're not really, you don't have a lot of uh, confidence yet, just play the note more than once. See? So that adds a little bit of... Uh, flavor to it and jazz. It makes you sound a little more accomplished and it kind of makes you feel better when you play. Then it says play a wrong note and correct it. Now some of you might be laughing now and saying well that's okay because I do that a lot but sometimes it sounds kind of neat when you when you hit the wrong note. Just fix it. So the fixing 
of the problem. Sometimes people think, wow, you are really good. And it's called improvisation. You're just putting in and fixing the note. So don't, when you make a mistake, don't go, oh man, I have to start all over. Just keep your calm. put a grace note and a trill while you're fixing it and people will think you're amazing uh, when you're really just kind of faking it all right echo or or uh, echo a phrase or a measure so you can go see so that's a fill just echo what you just played, especially if you have notes that have uh, you have to hold on to a long time. Play the intro for an ending and the ending for an intro. So if you're just starting to play, um, you can just kind of go. There's your intro. Now when you're when it's done. You could play the beginning for the ending and the ending for the beginning. So it's kind of cool to, to give that a shot and give it a try. Turn a waltz into 4-4 four, four, or 4-4 four, four into a waltz. If you want to play this one as a waltz. Just try to change the the time signature and you could change the whole way the song sounds. All right, play a third under the melody. All right, so let's go back in this book now and we'll take a we'll take a song, um, a Hawaiian kind of song. And Hawaiian music, you could play in thirds. So a third is a skip a note and play the next. So if one note's up and two notes down, that's a third. Okay, so you just lock your hand. So you can play Hawaiian music, you can go. All right, or you can go. So when you're playing any, any song, you can play, um, uh, I can't even think of one right now, but just lock your hand and play in thirds. Now there's a rule. Um, the number one says play a sixth under the melody. A sixth is four notes up and two notes down. So if I'm playing Hawaiian music, that doesn't sound good. If a third sounds terrible, turn it into a sixth. So this is a peace sign, that's a third. And this is the I'm a little teapot, you know, that little song, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Um, that's a sixth. Four notes up, and just lock your hand, and the melody's always on the top. So I could play a low a oi. we did you could grace note, note that whole sixth and get a Hawaiian glide just drop the sixth the half step on the top and the bottom and you get a Hawaiian glide you could do it with thirds too hit the bottom note first and you get a great Hawaiian effect um, so that's number 11 alternate between thirds and sixth a padding play the bottom note before the top note or play octaves so that's what we just talked about. You can play octaves. And you can get some really cool effects that way too. All right? Chop chop the chord. Now, a lot now if you're a beginning piano player, the left hand if you're just playing chords, it gets really really kind of boring. 
So if you're playing Marianne and you're just doing this, and you're just holding the chord down, after a while you start to go, wow, I really sound like a beginner. So you could do lots of things with your left hand. You could just play. Or you can you can play one note and the other two. So you can just make up simple, easy little things with your left hand. Just make it move. You can roll it. So you could chop it and then roll it and just there's a there's kind of a cool rule if the if the melody is busy the chord doesn't have to be but if the melody is not busy then you need to do something with this hand to make it more interesting okay so that's called chop chop the chord number 14 is stop playing the chord altogether for a few bars so you can go Just delay the chord and don't play it just exactly when it, where it's supposed to be. You can also play it one beat late, which is not a hard thing for some people to do either. So it kind of gives you a minute to get your head together and sometimes you just play right past the chord and forget it was even there. So that you can uh, contribute to number 14, stop playing the chord altogether. All right, 15, just play the chords between the verses or the phrases. And that's kind of just what I just talked about. Just play the chords randomly. You don't have to always just ha be holding on to that chord and just have it go on all the time. So you can move it and you can make it a little more interesting. Number 16, mess around with rhythms and backgrounds. All right. So if I'm playing Marianne, I, I kind of like the Latin rhythm for Marianne. So I'm just going to put it on a little introduction, and I'm playing on a Yamaha Clavinova, um, and this is what I teach on at home. But if you have an organ or a keyboard, just just experiment. Try this is now this is a Latin version, so I can just go. See how my melody is a little late. One note. See, and you can just sit there and just, you go, yeah, I sound, a simple little easy song, I sound really, really, really good. Um, take the garbage out. Turn the volume down on the backgrounds. Now, if you have a keyboard, you can take the drummer out um, just by reducing the volume on the drum section. Um, so all you get is a background and no drummer. Uh, and so that's kind of fun. Number 18, use drums only, no background. Play a simple melody. So don't turn on the background, just turn on the drum. And just try some chords. You just start making arrangements, your own arrangements. All right, number 18, hold the fill in the foot switch to get an instant new rhythm, uh, and that's for the organ. So if you don't have an instrument that'll do that, then we can just skip that one. Number 20, move a little, get an attitude, and people will watch. You listen, they'll watch you and listen, um, and listen more closely to you. Now, I, when I teach kids on the piano, I try to teach them to feel the song that they're playing. So if I'm playing when the saints go marching in, and I want to use, let's say, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to play some swing and jazz and Dixieland, okay? And I'm going to put a little intro on so I get an attitude before I start. All right, and I think the instrument that I'd like to use is a clarinet. 
so I'm going to go up to the woodwind section and I find a clarinet. Okay? So now I got to think like a clarinet player. Right? He's only going to play one note because clarinets can't play more than one note. Okay, now you can't see me on camera, but if I just start to move a little bit, grace notes and a trill play more than uh, echo play with the ending so it's it just makes you as a beginner or even if you're not a beginner you can add all of these hints to other things but let's go back one more thing to number three we've skipped glissandos now glissandos are not that easy to do on a piano they're much easier to do on an organ or a keyboard because the keys are a little lighter but there's three kinds of glissandos finger glissandos um, or chromatic glissandos they're called they are for um, intervals of a fifth or less, usually. Okay, and in one of my videos, we talked about doing chromatics. It's one, three, one, three, one. And when you get to the spaces where there's no black note, you put your second finger down. But the black notes always get your third finger. And the Fs and the Cs always get your second finger. So you go up and down. So you can, you can go, see? So you could do little glissandos. Those are called chromatic. Chromatic means you play every note. You take the long way from note to note. All right, another, another kind of glissando is called a finger glissando. Now this is kind of hard on the fingers, but if the interval's bigger than a fifth, you just take your fingers and you go. All right, coming down, you use your thumb. Going up finger coming down thumb okay the other one is called a palm glissando and that's if you're playing a chord if you're going from chord to chord you just slide your hand in put your palm down and then you come back down and that's your palm glissando and it's a nice massage for your to take all the skin off your palm so those are glissandos that you can add now I didn't play anything fancy but you can just sit and play um, whatever you like. So if I'm, you know, just kind of in a melancholy mood, I might just sit down and go, all right, I'm just going to play a little bit of swing and nice and slow. All right, and I'm going to put on a little bit, maybe a little jazz organ. And if, if, if you listen to any of my videos, you know I'm very, uh, I just really like to play the organ. So, see, you can hear all these little hints. Okay, and then put on a little ending. So just take your time and, and try these. Buy some fake books. Fake books are awesome because you're, if you're learning chords, and this is one of my favorite Facebook, or Facebooks, <laughs> fake books. Um, it's called the first fake book. There's two of them, and then there's a Christmas one too. They are, they are um, put out by Hal Leonard, and they are Hal Leonard 00240112. Um, and you can order them on HalLeonard.com. You can order them right off the internet or go to your local music store. I'm still an advocate of actually going to a music store. They're, um, 
you know, some of them are really struggling now and they need our support. It's, it's going to be very sad when there isn't a place to go to look at the books before you buy them. So um, check out your local music store and go buy some fake books and easy play big note books and just get an attitude without much aptitude. You don't have to have a lot to really have a really good time with your music. So we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this last little video that we did on getting an attitude without much aptitude. Um, I've always been enamored with people that can just sit down and play and just do whatever comes to their head randomly. I, unfortunately for me it never came that easy so I just made a list of things to do and so I can remember and I could just look over at it and go oh I could put a grace note there or I could do this or that so I hope it helps you um, try to give you some ideas even if you just use one of them uh, each time you try a song I think you will find it'll kind of change the way you feel when you play um, also I like this little poster here uh, that I made um, it's on the front of my workshop book but it's just a bunch of people dancing on a keyboard and it's kind of my favorite my very favorite um, picture so I'll try to put that up closer so you can see it. It's just showing people having fun with music. And if you dance or sing or just listen to music, I think you'll find that it all comes from your heart and not your head. So just keep it simple and enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going.